Breda, some people call it the Pearl of the South. And that's not much of a surprise since this city is apparently full of beautiful art and delicious food. It's also only about an hour away from Amsterdam on the train. In this video, we'll be exploring Breda for the first time. From admiring the art-filled streets- Do you see it? Do you understand? To climbing the tower of the church that's in the center of town. And we'll also be stopping by a restaurant founded by Dutch potato farmers with the goal of making potatoes great again. I mean, weren't potatoes always great? We love potatoes. So is Breda the Pearl of the South? Let's find out. Goedemorgen and welcome back from a very sunny Breda. You know, it's funny, we've actually been here a bunch of times before, but we've only really connected to the train station. We've connected here to Eindhoven, to Barla Nassau. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, that was cool. So it's really our first time exploring Breda itself today, and we're very excited to get started, beginning with what else but breakfast. Let's go. This is probably the highest rated cafe in Breda, and it's called Sip First. And we weren't so much drawn here by the coffee, more so by the unique items on the menu. So they have an English breakfast, and they actually have black pudding here. I'm not getting that. You're not getting I will not that? be getting the black pudding, oh. absolutely not. And then they have like two really unique pancakes. I think I'm gonna get the matcha pancakes. And you're gonna do the English breakfast with the, the black pudding? The, the green matcha pancakes. Yeah, why are they green? Well, I mean, they're green because it's matcha. Is the question applied, is though? like, yes. <laughs> they just put Cholula on our table in preparation of my English breakfast. That is a very good sign. I haven't seen this since Texas. I haven't seen it. Well, don't we have it in our house? No. We've never I had Cholula here? here. No, I oh can't find it really? here. Yeah. It's special? I think it's kind of special. I haven't found it at the expat store. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, we man. love Cholula. I'm going to eat some of yours, okay? Why put on pancakes? Well <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are they green? Yeah, they're green. Oh yeah, they're green. Oh yeah. There we go. Does it taste like matcha? Mm-hmm. Does it taste like bacon? Mm-hmm. Does it taste like green? There's also like thinly sliced pears on top too. Oh. So that's really good. And the syrup on it is like very, very sweet. So I feel like if you got this with anything else but bacon, mm -hmm. it might be like a little intense, but yeah. it's perfect with the bacon. You think this is better than the place in Eindhoven? Based on presentation mm -hmm. alone, what do you think? They have yeah. Cholula. I, I think so. It's a delicious breakfast sausage. The eggs are eggs, but I can tell you this, the Cholula, it's the Chipotle Cholula, and it is so smoky, not spicy, and it pairs so well with the rest of this. It's pretty good breakfast. Probably could use a bigger plate, but oof. In Breda, there's art all around the city, and it's called the Blind Walls Gallery. The city basically invites local and international artists to paint murals on the sides of the building, and these murals are inspired by the neighborhoods that they're in. Let's go check them out. This one's really cool because this is an updated version of like an actual still life painting and it draws inspiration from all of the restaurants on this street. I don't know where the bird's coming from. Where's the matcha pancake? I don't see it. I don't see the English breakfast either. So this one is called Tue Mausen. And in 2019, the theme of National History Month was she, he, and it explores gender roles. And this is specifically about Maria von Antwerpen, who pretended to be a man to join the army. Just like Mulan. Just like Mulan. The story behind this one is really neat. So when they identified this wall as where they wanted a mural to be built, they asked the owner of the building, like, what do you want on the side of your building? And she immediately said this really famous church that used to be in the city. And this is what it looked like. And they painted it on the side of her building. That's pretty dope. Isn't that so cool? This mural is a visual interpretation of the contemporary com consumer society. It was like a tongue twister. Do you see it? Do you understand? These are a series of smaller murals built on the construction fence outside of the Hrote Kerk. And by the way, we'll be coming back here later. All of these artists are inspired by pictures and symbols that you would see on a gravestone that represent like strength or the afterlife. And there's some really weird ones. Construction began on the church around 1410 and the organ inside was reconstructed in 1969 and it was built from like all of these different organ pieces that were shipped from around the country. You mean like hmm? human organs? Yeah, yeah, like kidneys and lungs and like brains. Oh my no, God. Like a like a like a doo 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 organ, you know? Like a doo, -doo, -doo organ. We 
we are in the Hinnika neighborhood here in Breda, which is apparently home of the Hinnikuk, which can only be found, I think, at one baker, which is Bakker Yapen. So let's go see what this whole thing's all about. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's way bigger than I thought. Oh my god. It's literally like a little cake. Yeah. I it's gonna be like a cookie. Me too. I, I even know. saw it in the thing and it looked like a cookie. Yeah, the words that were used to describe it was like crispy and airy. So I definitely thought it was gonna be more like cookie than pastry. Wow, look at that. Ooh. I didn't hear a crunch. There is definitely no crunch. It is delicious though. It's very American donut like. Oh my god, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the texture at the bottom is very soft and yeasty. And you see there's like air bubbles inside of it. This is the closest that I feel like we've gotten to a cream filled donut. Is it like a Boston cream pie with a strawberry topping on it? A little bit, yeah. Not quite as rich as okay. like a Boston cream donut. It's definitely a lot lighter than that, but it is quite close in texture. How many strobe waffles? Four strobe waffles. I hope you enjoyed that montage. Hopefully it turned out pretty good. Anyway, we've been zigzagging for dinner tonight. Originally, y'all recommended Food Hall Breda, and we looked it up, and then we found this other place called Big Belly Bar, and we were like, oh, maybe we should go there. So we made reservations there. But now we're zagging because one of the trusted members of the Bun Charter community, Ramona, recommended an Italian place that's inside Food Hall Breda. So now we're like, maybe that's what we want for dinner. Maybe that's the right thing to do. So. We're currently walking to Food Hall Breda, and our apologies to Big Belly Bar because you are not going to be in the video tonight. Hopefully there's no Big Belly Bar fans. Hopefully the owner of Big Belly Bar is not a bunch hearted viewer. Oh, no. I think y'all wanted us to go to Food Hall Breda anyway. <laughs> Paul. Paul. Breda. Breda. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Calm down. We're not going to be eating it tonight, but they have vegan carbonara, which is absolutely bananas. I've never seen that before. I've never seen it before, but I respect them for trying. They have Italian stove Where? Oh my god. It's pasta. I think we should try that. Yeah. I wasn't gonna get that, but I think we should probably try that. We should probably we should get the carbonara too, because that, that was That was a recommendation, yeah. So do we just get two pastas? My favorite thing about food halls like this is that it's sort of like a little like UN. You've got a Thai kitchen next to a Japanese place, next to a Vietnamese place, next to I don't know, probably like a Mexican place next to the Italian place. It's just kind of like, it's all represented here, you know? Represented. Represented. <laughs> represented. It's kind of beautiful in a way, you know? It is. All of different cultures coming together to feed us. In Breda. In Breda. <laughs> Meal number one is the carbonara. Yep. The regular non-vegan carbonara, because this is what was recommended to us. Apparently it is heaven, according to Ramona. Yeah. It looks pretty good. The bacon looks really good. It oh, looks double nice. bacon day. Double bacon day. Oh my gosh. What? Hashtag blessed. I know. And it looks really creamy. The spaghetti is cooked perfectly. And it's just like really cheesy without being too rich. And then I mean like the bacon on top is just like perfectly fatty. How does it rank on the carbonara scale? Five being Burrowy Salvia in Rotterdam, which is our one of our favorite restaurants in the Netherlands. Well, and uh, zero being um, the carbonara we had on the Virgin Voyages. For oh, sure. damn. I think this is, this is four. I'm extremely interested in this one. The Italian stove place. Yeah. It looks like bolognese, doesn't it? The it bolognese does. is separate on the menu. Yeah, but it's uh, really chunky meat. Yeah. Like, and bolognese is not usually like that. It's a bit more of like a ground beef situation or like sausage or pork. It's got some sort of like topping on it, which I'm assuming is like Parmesan cheese. What do you think this is? It's definitely Parmesan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Honestly, this really reminds me of something that my Italian American step grandparents used to make, which was like this like really good shredded braised beef. 
that they used to pair with uh, a lot of the pasta dishes they served us. What is what kind of pasta was this? Penne? Uh, rigatoni. Oh, they were like, oh, this is a rigatoni and like a braised beef sauce. I'd be like, oh yeah, 100% yes. But maybe people wouldn't order it as much, you know? And people are like, oh, it's still place. I know that. I don't know. It's good. Just not still place. Still five shrimp waffles, though. Five? Yeah, it's pretty good. Damn. That was delicious. And there's only one thing you can do after eating a ton of pasta. It's go to Albert Hein, buy some auto drop, and eat it in the bathroom. In uh, the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to say bathtub because our hotel room has a giant bathtub in it. Yeah, what he said. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> like over the door. <laughs> This is the come through on the camera. I know. It's like it's the exact same color. It is the exact same color. This is De Jongens von Sand and Clay, and they want to make potatoes great again. I mean, weren't potatoes always great? We love potatoes. And this restaurant was founded by two potato farmers from Tilburg, so they know their potatoes. So it looks like for lunch they've got like a, a lunch plank, which is a little bit of everything, but I think we're gonna go with the more normal, I think, things for lunch, which is the crispy potato basket. Okay, when I ordered a crispy potato basket, I thought it was gonna be like a basket of fried potatoes, but it's literally it's a, a basket crispy made of potatoes. potato basket. Honestly, I'm just feel bad eating it. Mm -hmm. It's just so pretty. This is made of potato, and you break it open and you basically like build your own bite. I don't know why I expected potatoes to be on the bottom. Yeah, I mean, there might be, but I think the rendang? You didn't say what you got. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I got the beef rendang. 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 According to Michelle, young people in the Netherlands are eating less potatoes than they used to. So I think that's kind of what the vibe of the restaurant is. But we were just talking about how in the U.S., we eat potatoes with everything. Yeah. French fries, ha uh, hash, hash browns, browns mashed potatoes, potatoes, baked potatoes. Au gratin potatoes. Au gratin potatoes. We eat a lot of potatoes in the U.S. Like almost one meal per day mm -hmm. would include a potato. I can't imagine a world without potatoes. Mm. All right. Well, there's only one thing we can do after eating a meal like that. What? Getting deja vu. Well, I can definitively say that if you're, for whatever reason, trying to decide between climbing Dom Torin or the Hrothkerker in Breda, you should do that one. You don't go quite as high up in the air, but it felt a lot more raw and like an actual, like, uh... Felt very authentic. It felt very authentic, and the view was still absolutely beautiful. I think I just said view. I mean, what better way to work off an expensive, fancy, potato-centric lunch than climbing a bunch of stairs? 287 steps. That's exactly right. So, next time you're connecting through Breda, maybe make a little bit of a stop here. But as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see y'all next week. Till done.